Beckoned by the dark. Wrapped in the cloak of night, I abandoned my coffee cups and roaches to the ashtray. Captivated by the exquisite sound of silence, listening to the unheard. Mesmerized by moonbeams softly ambered, I write. If moonbeams were a poem, that would be me. I would like anybody who would like to start us off tonight, unmute yourself, poets, and, and the four features, please. Feel free to stay unmuted, make a comment, scream, yell, do whatever you feel is necessary to get your shit on. So who wants to go first, y'all? Samuel? It was get a it. moment of anticipation, at least. I thought it would be. She was that second of temptation that stopped me. I could see her into it. Seems to have captured her imagination. She didn't blink an eye when I said hello. She just kept on reading as if I were not there. I wanted her attention. I could see the title of the book. To my surprise, it was my own pen. I knew then this would be a moment to go all in. So I recited a line. I knew she had already read. If I were making love, you would be the only recipe I need. She stopped. She said, I see you have read this book. I said, no, I am this book. Yes, I am complicated passions. The voice behind this pen, you have only loved this deep in your dreams. Now imagine these affections whispering to the moment you come to hear me passionately saying, I'm not done. I seek to find your love's end. I so want to over and over. So tell me, how do you love me after you make love to me? You see, sometimes you make me want to scream, so you'll need to hold on. The passion's on fire. My love like high on you. I just can't get enough of that drug of a kiss. I could just imagine the caress I would miss. It called out to me, I want you. I tried to say no. She kissed me. Again, that moment I wanted all in. The speed of love had me, I had no choice. She held on for the life of me. Took off my safety belt. <laughs> what was I to do? She took me for a ride. She said, I got you. I was fantasy on high when she was true. You see, I was moved by desire. Like once the desert was the sea, you set flame to fire when you express your wanting to be with me. I was tempted to love again. I would hunger the pleasures of your company. You see, I need you. Like a watch keeps time. Like a ball needs a bat. Damn word jam, I had to hit that. I caressed her like chocolate on cake. Now tell me, can you imagine that? I traced her like a private eye to uncover the beautiful things she wanted to do. I became that passionate surrender she would come to when she wanted to share a heart with a love that's true with someone who will understand when a woman needs a man like you do. She said, hold up complicated. You can't be true. She says, nobody loves like you say you do. She told me I talked a good game. So she packaged me up, categorized me as if I were a plaything, like she could get me off of a rack. I don't know where she's been shopping at. And maybe she's never had a love who's had her back. So I let her vent. Seems as though she's been spent, cause and effect, a casualty of integrity. So I guess I let her see she's right. There's not another lover like me. You see, I want to love as if it would be an implication, like the sunsets and the stars fill the sky. The eroticism from this would be deeper than life. Picture this. 
her first sensuous caress when it is you, the moon, and I. Held in each breath, the whispers of sweet everything. The affection shared will be kisses to wet your desire. Each and every part of you, I will do. And just because I want to. So tell me, how do you love me after you make love to me? <laughs> you make love to me? Again, I am complicated passions, the voice behind this pen. Thank you. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you, me, and the moon. Nice. Go ahead, Douglas. I'm going to jump on in. Go ahead. Names rattle inside my head like coiled viper snakes constricting around helpless prey. A list of jilted lovers whose hearts were ultimately abused, not taking solace in the distance, instead miring in the tragedy of circumstance. Conviction, 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 unanimous verdict, an indictment of the soul. It could take a law and order style team up to deduce the infractions this body has made, this mind has dictated. Though what if possibilities continually circumvent names rattle inside my head they instill as though they were dead corpses that each hesitant foot glides over minefields awaiting eruption artful tapestries torn apart desecrated like the flags of our forefathers have been forsaken was once told i was secretly loved you for you me for me warts and all consumed by regret the amore dissipated and the hollowness sets in no one to blame but the anvils of invalid decisions misplaced contingencies and now you're gone 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 evaporated into the dust that never settled indistinguishable from the convincing pantomiming mime as though your movements themselves were performative not protective your kisses still drive me absolutely mad your scent infused caresses offered yearned for security your auburn hair and tinted hazel green eyes could entrance me in an endless stare of seismic proportions electricity courses through veins windburn meets my face as hands gesticulate mid-verse audience in palms of hands always in demand emotions as magic wands i am the live wire frenetic but controlled bombastic but bolstered sturdy in representing truth sonic power at my instantaneous command the live wire living in the moment but not always basking in adulation Storytelling bears no limitation, no set permutation, but sem transfiguration. Metamorphosis makes matters most enjoyable. Kinetic buzzing, ping pongs, ping pongs, ping pongs around this activated brain stem, this cortex that connects this spinal cord that taps into bottomless reservoirs of sound and fury, signifying everything. I am the live wire, like a mixtape on repeat that never spoke. Mm -hmm. like a turntable's needle that never skips like a jazz drummer always keeping time in the pocket for his counterparts offer instruments to flourish synthesis and syncopation synergy and sustenance for a live wire travels in split second intervals akin to teleportation riding the lightning of inspiration deluging down dendrites and axons siphoning power but conserving some for auxiliary usage i am the live wire yeah yes okay here we go these sheets, <clears throat> the energy inside the sheets, inside this room, inside the swirl around us waits and tingles and anticipates the touch, the reach, that fresh body smell of the electric vibrations inside the sacred container. The room you share, the place you meet, the vulnerability it takes to find that space inside the energy between the ears. The power is between the ears. It ignites that spark between my lips and inside that spot, that time that it takes to work it up, to swirl that electrified energy, the energetic fire that lifts me up and down and over and over, takes us to the mountaintop, 
to the sea, into the air, tumbling together, the stretching of a moment in the forever, foreverness of now that we combine into one bright orb of light and filter that refracts the electricity and it spins it round and over and spirals it into the rhythm of the circuit connected again and again, the entire room bursting with the tornado of the storm and the power of that energy carnelian in color as it tints the whole room the deepest, darkest, sacral oranges and reds and fires can't forget the fire and water and waves moving the flow underneath our bubble floating into the treetop. The redwoods so tall and the ocean so massive, the wind, it blows us and caresses us and supports us to the highest of flight into the clouded stars to galaxies waiting to spin our bubble and expand our minds and bodies and pleasures inside the energy inside this moment between these two yeah <laughs> nice piece very nice piece nah all right so samuel Christy? There's something about you. Look into these eyes. I found myself in a spell to think of you as my heart pounding for a love far away. The calling of my hunger is for surrender that won't let go. Feel this impression. My thoughts up on your mind, it will move you like a butterfly. Seeing your love through these eyes, passionately sends my emotions to say these very words, love me now and forever be that temptation. Yes, there's something about you. You are that impulse filling my thoughts. Your words send my love to another world. I am enslaved by the emotions of my own desire a love of the same mind a mirror reflection of what my life would be taken by the urge i was lured by the attraction my hunger the passion <laughs> turning up the heat <laughs> man that was awesome yeah don't wait y'all just jump right, right in if in. you got it Diversity I face before I rest in peace. I take hold of life lessons accumulated, middle finger to oppression, awakened body rising to the occasion, not melting like the wicked witch of the West. Westerly wind guides my north star, arm raises, furthest knuckle placed near celestial star patterns, guiding me south, unexplored lands with no map, just a sense of focus on this expedition, not giving into conquistador impulses like, like my descendants, but forging a path of love, conviction, a self-starter, feet leading to an oasis, washing the wounds off this body, a mind overflowing with creative curiosity, can doesn't get tipped over no checkmate for mammals shouldn't mate with hate it's irate let decisions dictate muse fuels the spirit uncorks the magic never tragic but exploratory now forced to keep up appearances image conscious society dictates decorum Couples posing, posturing, aloof in their decadence. Is there a rebellion in the chit-chat? Toss a stone through this glass, shattering it to granular bits. Now a glamour. She stood astute, amazed at the tension among the uninvited and invited guests. He declared he was sick of the stiffness of his forefathers. Now a glamour of habits, the zeal, the divine decadence, mass underneath the tortured oppression, a seething guilt as the years elapsed in the empty Empty shallowness continues continues youth drains those already old have withered away wait a minute youth drains but there's fortitude in this in these foundations that are being resuscitated mm. all right I'm, I'm good for now mm. i'm gone <clears throat> on the wall from this wall, this view, these kaleidoscopic eyes, your world seems so small to me, so strange, so centered on self, 
on distraction and on those screens. What is on those screens anyway? Why do you continually stare at all of those boxes? Big ones, little ones, everywhere. What can be so important? As I buzz and I buzz trying to figure it all out, back and forth, up and down, high and low, they're still staring at those screens. This is getting a little weird. They never seem to look away. As I buzz and I buzz enjoying each new thing, new room, new smell, and all the smells they have, the food they get to enjoy, right? Fruit, fruit yummy noodles, sweet, so, sweet sodas the taste that you get to taste, so inviting, so intoxicating, so cerebral, I'm so jealous. As I buzz and I buzz pot inside this house, this place of mystery with so many windows that trick my eye and my sense of direction. I just wanted a taste to visit for a while. I wasn't looking to be stuck. I didn't want to be imprisoned. Help me, please help me find my way out. Why do you never go outside? Just open the door, open a window, quit looking at those fucking screens. Please, for the love of God, for the love of mercy, open this window, open a door, go outside, let me out. I must get back, but don't you see that place, that smell to that Fun house ain't so fun anymore. Why, oh why, are you all still watching those boxes? Just swatting me away, just pretending I'm not here. Please, anyone, somewhere, somehow, help me as I buzz and I buzz. When will this all be over? When will I be free, free to find space, to find sun, to feel free? Okay, okay, I think this is it. Something's happening. You're finally looking up and away from those screens. Okay, you're getting up. Yes, this is the moment. This is the moment I have been begging for. You are going to open it, open the door to freedom. Finally, it's here. Freedom to fly in nature again, to be free from all your screens again. But wait, what's that? What's in your hand? Why are you coming towards me and not the door? Wait, what? Why? No! <laughs> From freedom, I struggled. Birthed in a land far from my heart, no longer native sun, my soul dimmed into dark places. Mapped bodies chained across seas, death be my struggle, nightmares, my dreams. I see home when the next ship comes. Welcome to Jamestown, now present day, I'm in need of a price check to see where the value of my life is set. Noticing how I'm built these days, it was time to reevaluate. Being the underlying truth to have problems, some misunderstanding of what's really going down, lies and confusion, the environment flowing in the content, having misinterpreted intentions. No longer will you benefit from my not knowing how much is that gorilla in the window now. I love LA, not this LA. The city of freeway mansions graffitied by overpass views. The sun, another day of hell in these streets. The city of homeless, no one gives a damn. Dehumanized just a drive by, priced out for so far in the woods. Hungers on the menu. Night creatures, sidewalk living, can you feed me? Death be the smell they're given. Ooh. 40 years of show me the money, trying to survive in a city of angels, now devils ruled by demons in blue. Can you hear the voices? One day, it may be you. Dark man blues. Ooh. Damn, dark man, yeah. Oh, I see Amanda, you've joined us. You got a piece? Guess not. <laughs> All right, who's next? Guess I'll jump back in. Jump back in again. All right. Excuse me, 
While I resist taking my bow, this curtain isn't closing, it's still opening night. Blight averted, being criticized doesn't diminish this duality of mind. Not being defeated, ever more dexterous, undone by nothing. Near dwells prowl, an odor most foul. Considering myself some of the nights, slicing through irrationality with sharpened katana blade. There's casualty to criminality. Crystallizing to ash, catch me if you can. I am running at infinity multiplied by space time. Barriers broken, velocity all physics. The bowling ball swiftly strikes right down the lane, thunderously rip roaring, clear the decks, taking repeated beatings to the face, bludgeon nose, swelled up eye, but I'm still engaged, not beleaguered. Excuse me while prickly roses are tossed to my feet, but on impact, they bloom into full gardens, oxygenated aeration, allowing much needed ventilation, everyone collectively breathing, Karma Sutra breaths, starting from the belly, the button, a scar where umbilical cord was once used for nutrition, enriched sustenance, fetal development. Hold down the block. Don't barricade oneself in rooms without doors or windows. Grandma sipping cherry wine on windowsills, high atop balconies overlooking their accomplishments while their children admire in the foreground, witnessing seraphs, palms pressed, praying to the skies, keeping us energized, photosynthesized. Flowers expand upward and outward, linking fates, destinies paradoxical. The direct affixes his camera, holds the position, doesn't pan, zeroing on humanity's blemishes. Follow the beat of your own drum, the staccato march. Stilettos may crack on sharp pavement, but pathways are freshly blazed. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are revolution. Fire, fire, it's all on fire. Burning down, down to the crispy bits. Crispy burnt up bits as we stand around and see it flickering. Flames everywhere. We should gather round, gather round the spark, the smoke, and circle and celebrate. Celebrate this fire, this very towerish moment of it all because it is all rotten. Grown in sandy soil, the roots of the trees that we hung them in, and the land of the natives that we stole from them. Root rot from the soil, far, far down, deep down under, underground, underbelly, the systems all below us, based on lies to divide, to produce, to grow. Everything is growing. Hate, divide, so wide. The forest is out of control. And what do you do when it's out of control? Well, you have a controlled burn and you burn it and it burns and it flames and it gets a new chance, a new life as all the crispy bits filter back into the earth. So new buds can birth and push and grow. We must grow and push and push to grow. But first it must burn, burn it first. I can feel it. I can smell it. The smoke burns my eyes and the fire is here. The flames around us now join hands, my friends, and sing and play and teach and listen and laugh and march and revolution. March around the tower and find the ones who hold the signs because the signs are everywhere. They are here tonight in this group, in this magic, this virtual room. The fire is here among our voices, among our passions, among our burnings. Burn with passions, burn with connections, burn with words, burn to turn the ashes to art, to words, to action, to revolution, to revolution. We are revolution. We are revolution. <laughs> That was fire, Christy. Yeah. I have a quick question for uh, MJ Blackwell. Yes. What city are you walking in? Brooklyn. Hi. I'm, <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn, but I'm in Manhattan right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, th this year I'm going to be in New York. So you're there at the show. Imagine this. I love your hair and the way you wear it. Even if it's short, I'll still run my fingers through it. 
To look into your eyes, I would gaze with delight. Your lips, I would kiss until I got it right. You see, I want to be in every word you speak. I want to be your living fantasy. Let me explore every hill and valley, peaks too. I won't stop until I discover every part of you. Set your world afire with the passion you truly desire. Now this is something I could shout about, but like a whisper sweet I will be. This is between just you and me. I am complicated passions. <laughs> oh man. Woo, hold on, MJ. Hold on. <laughs> that was tight. <laughs> that was dope. Just letting y'all know that Amanda's having a lot of trouble with her internet. So if she can jump on, she will. Um oh, I see her. So maybe we'll get to hear her tonight. All right. So uh, go ahead, Doug. I'll jump back in. All right. Sure, go ahead. Impulse-led decisions can lead to unraveling. Indomitable willpower, not enough to course correct the bullet. Locked and stocked. Barrel smokes, cinders, sharpshooter mounted atop a, sky a skyscraper. Attempted assassination, federales hot on the trail in flaming pursuit. Red herrings tossed, not as roadmaps, but divergent paths. Impulse-led decisions can lead to implosions. Scratching the surface of internalized desperation, a hunger that needs must be met. Collateral damages, crucifixion, coin flips, cajoling incongruence, falling on one's own sword, not Excalibur, a dagger yanked from pure stone. Call it Parsifal's Quest, seeking out the Holy Grail on his own terms by his own machinations. Strategies need to be implemented. Careful calculation averting greater calamity, body not yet lying comatose. The cousin of sleep. The beeping of the heartbeat monitor, blipping, blipping, blipping. Let's crank up the beat bop. Listen to K-pop. Don't stop, drop, roll. There's no fire yet. Specifically, got to be slicker than oil. Lyrical heat renders superstardom supernatural. Superimposed images over black tie dress. A belief in a higher deity, warrant out for soul's arrest. Detest, protest, life can be a contest, as well as contested. Two prize fighters locking horns. Evander Holyfield's ear on the ground. A bloodied stump. Cameras click and perceive saviors and paparazzi parachute down. Dissension on the scene. Insurrection in Capitol Halls. Unbridled emotions turning us into rabid animals. Can can't do damage on their scratch posts. Dogs claw through shoes, furniture, version of marking territory, sometimes feeling like a marked man. Navigating this megalopolis hellscape, sans vegetation, sans proper nutrition, impulse-led decisions are delirious. Ramifications aplenty, forethought must be prioritized. If there's a chance at worthwhile futures. Wow, you guys. Peace. It's Amanda here. I'm going to jump in. Tell me if you're here. Okay. How can they be us? Look at them. Angry, hate-filled bodies. How can they be us storming our capital? Eyes angered and narrowed. How can they be us inciting fear, promoting violence, standing in strangeness? How can they be us? How can this be? How did this happen? It did happen. It is happening. It has been happening since the beginning, since the very start of our country, since the moment mm. that it was decided to conquer, to clear, to own, to own the land from the natives, from the ones who were here first, to own what freedom means, to own the story, the narrative, the history of our country, to write the books and make the heroes and distort the reality. This is us, always us, from the plantations to the smallpox, to the internment camps, mm. to the jail systems, to the redlining districts, to the good old boys club. It has been us. It has always been here. If your skin is white, you might not even have realized it, but it is here. 
we got good at avoiding it, covering up, putting that big shiny bow on it, but it's always been right here. Ask an immigrant. Ask your gay friend, ask the Native Americans, ask your black co-workers, ask the homeless man. You're always passing on your way to work. They will tell you, they will show you, they will share with you, share their stories, their horrors, their sadness. It is time now. It is time to own the history, to own the good with the bad, to own what has been here. It is time now to start owning it, to show it, fixing it. If, if we say they are not us, it can never be fixed. They are us. They have always been us. We must stop pretending. We must start acting, receiving, believing. We are not free. To be free is to be equal. To be free is to be peaceful. To be free is to be loving. Hate is not that. Separation is not that. Narcissism is not that. Classism is not that. Racism is not that. Sexism is not that. Homophobia is not that. Capitalistic greed is not that. Until yes. we are all free, no one is free. Free to be healthy, free to be sick, free to make a living wage, free to work less and still survive, free to have a home, free to not starve while food gets tossed into the fucking garbage, mm. free to yes. parent. Free yes. to own our own bodies, yes. free to be who you are, no matter color, no matter gender, no matter pronoun, no matter clothes, no matter party, no matter religion, no matter disabilities, no matter of any difference of any kind, until all are not free to suffer, not free to disparage, to disavow, to divide, to be not free, not free, not free to be shot with rubber bullets to be met by an army while protesting, to be shot in beds, to be gassed for peaceful protests, to be kneeled on and killed, to be dragged from wheelchairs, to be ridiculed for taking a knee, to be put in cages, to be given secret hysterectomies, to be afraid of the police, to be afraid for children, to be afraid of the justice system, to be afraid of being different and until we see that this is us, it will always be us to see it, to own it, to call it out, to tell the real story, to feel the pain, to feel the sadness, to own our mistakes, to own the pain we have caused, are still causing, are still putting that shiny bow on. Take it off, show the wounds, show the rot, show the tumors. It must be seen, it must be owned, it must be allowed to heal. We cannot keep it covered. It will never heal. Always scabbing, hurting, and peeling off. We all saw it. Don't pretend you didn't see it. The differences in preparation, in combativeness, in the handling of, of it, the differences so apparent, so appalling, so all encompassing of how the domestic terrorists are treated, of how the white faces are treated, of how the non rich are treated, of how the different are treated in healthcare, in looking down the noses of and living on the street, and the doctors that they are allowed, the food that is available, the hours work to barely stay afloat, it is all around us, the differences, the way it has played out, the way we have been divided, the way we choose to be divided. It has been recognized, regulated, dismantled, and needs to be ripped up by the roots and changed. It's not working. To ignore, to distract, to divide is the blindness. It is the mirage. It is what they want. But division is a choice. Power is a choice. Community is a choice. Healing is a choice. Owning mistakes is a choice. Changing your mind is a choice. Taking money out of politics is a choice. There are many options, the many options of change, of revolution, of discovery, of directions. The options are there. We must make a difference, be the difference. You are the difference. Find a way, be the way. You are the way. There is always another way. Always another way. Thanks. Oh, I forgot that one was so long. Sorry. <laughs> Woo! Shit, Christy. Wow, everybody take a breath. Man, that was heavy. Yeah. Thank you, Christy. Shoo. See, can I get this in the picture? Oh, there yeah, we go. Of course. Okay, you see that? Yep. They're cloning me. 
it's on sale on Amazon. It could be the best buy you buy this year because I think it's still under ten dollars, and Amazon put it on there. So if you buy that book for for under ten dollars, I still get nine eighty five. So I would thank you for buying that book, and I'm gonna give you a little snippet out of it. It says, "While I'm away, voices in the pillow echo last night's memories, tracing imprints left on sheets. Five in the morning, you still feel the clone in me, and my name." still resonating in an undisclosed location. Now, Miranda, I know him and sometimes her. It reads, stop them with bullets. That part is never read. It says in the small print, the black ones. It seems I must maintain my strength when you are the fear the truth tells me. My death is not the answer to your freedom. I got questions. Why have you canceled my rights to life? Has America gotten better wanting to be white? Just my thoughts. I can't be free when you're the only ones living it, shedding skin Mm -hmm. just to become the same you. Dark Man Blues, thank you. Um, Yes, fire. Nice. I jump back in? All right. Of course. Before you embark on a journey of revenge, dig to graves, said Confucius. The struggle the soul faces proves formidable, a struggle that might consume two lifetimes. The mold of humanity can sometimes turn to innate villainy, a deep in torture over a lengthy lifetime. Rhymes, escape, describe, dig to graves, dig to graves. A man knighted for the wrong reasons, propelled by selfish desire, his condition rendered inoperable, a closed cast funeral, bloodied, reminiscent of the snake's tribbling venom, its constricting body, its haunting gaze, petrifying its soon-to-be supper. Dig two graves, I utter, as Confucius echoes through me, haunting my very last nerve, for he was a purveyor of his knowledge through encounter upon encounter upon encounter. Those daring enough to jot down his thoughts into the realm of recorded history, ghostwriting his writings, unnamed pioneers, as bubbles form atop a blooming brain, buttressed by belligerence, my soul in turn becomes transient, passing between solid objects and distracting matter, dig two graves, dig two graves. I grasp the shuttle, beginning my discordance into dirt, while Persephone begins her six-month stint in hell, a spell now cast over a vengeful spirit whose compassionate side is a blind man with a walking stick. Shaking fingers tremble as cold sets in, chipping away at dermal layers never dignified by Botox injections. I can't allow life to ravage me. Dig two graves, dig two graves. My arms become puddles as I conjoin my future grave sites, linking the lifetime soon to perish. Meant to blanket the world in a fog as noxious smog overturns hearts and minds. Divinity halted. Wavelengths devolve into static frequency, needing to adjust the bunny ears to improve the reception of a very personal broadcast. Whilst my soul rings out on a clothesline while its skin sheds, whose tail rattles beneath sand dunes waiting for prey to arrive, not on a silver platter, but as a means to an end. One bite, one crunch, as bones split between fangs, as shrapnel shards embed themselves in limbs reduced to a stump, wanting to relate, wanting to relate, to not feel so entirely disconnected as I am reminded of the words of Confucius before you embark on a journey of revenge, dig two graves. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, when you get there, you'll know it. It will find you that place of too much that too far gone place, that out of your mind place, the one too many tokes place, 
that too much was taken place, that too many hits to the head plates, that overindulgent place of the cushy orange and red, the place of that moment that you figured it out, the place of too lateness as the room spins about, as the floor slightly wobbles and your friends' voices slow. When you get there, you'll know at that place that is too far to go. The place of the panic and the pulls it back out. The place of abundance you can't leave or get out. The fun house just mirrors the smoke in your face. When you get there, you'll know it by the look of mind's race. The toke that took it to the head look that finds you inside like Alice's mad hatter that you asked for that ride. When you get there, you'll know it but you can't leave just quite yet. You must find those orange Cheetos. The they're the secret way out, out of the house that smokes up the flame, out of that bong, the water's filling the frame, the frame of the house that holds you inside. The Cheetos are there. You gotta run fast to find, to find those orange puffs will release the trap door for the Cheetos are magic, allow you to fall through the floor. And out of the smoke that surrounds you inside, the Cheetos are in. They will end this wild ride. When you get there, you'll know it. For the orange cheetah, you'll see. The way to the out will come so easily. To find the pod cat and those crunchy orange kings. To release you, they will, and freedom they bring. Bring you back to the fun house that sits in your head. Pulls you out of the skies and puts you to bed. When you get there, you'll know it. For the pillow is the same. The Cheetos that came to save your smoke game. Save your cloudy head and your brains made of cheese. Save you in spite of the overtoked tease. To put you to bed and send you to stars. To get past the times where you where much where much smoke was too had to bring down the high and wave the orange flag. The Cheetos will save you, for they are the star of needing relief when weed goes too far. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Can you Dark see that? Man that blues. Dark Man Blues. Yes. If it were me. Dark Man Blues. John Bow. Dark Man Blues, the other side. And the latest Dark Man Blues book is called An Interview with Love. And uh let's see here. Let's close that. And here we go. She was a flower in the desert. I hungered the rain in her earth. The thought flamed my emotions. In the eyes of a stranger, I found myself captivated. I spoke her name only to have it echo all I had ever dreamed. The pleasures of her were the desires that made me. To taste her femininity was all I ever wanted. I thought, had I ever loved like this? surrendering passionately to her lips, to think I'm about to have the naughty list, to taste her music. She moved in tone, strings and bass. Her temple became surrender, heartbeats and thunder. To feel her body talk was magic, undressed by persuasion. It was every moment I would give into. Surrender whispered my name, dreamscaping into her mornings. That wine, that moon, that candlelight should be passion. And of course, I'm complicated sometimes. Yes, you are. And Sam, do you need to have asbestos gloves to read that book? Because uh, it's fire. Uh, uh, well, that an interview with love is coming out. And here's the deal. You buy the interview for love, and then I give you a copy for free of of uh what's that book a prelude to passion where then you could read i couldn't speak a foreign language so i translated love to her as though i were the rosetta stone flowing lines of seduction sharing ancient memories of a lost civilization she would find this dark man being the sun flowering her emotions this prelude would lead me to foreplay after the conversation her and music, night echoes like smooth jazz. Skin deep traces through her, she be a flower capturing the sun, a melody I so want the keys to, being those after touches coming inside of her. We be a prelude to seduction. 
And those two books, buy one, Dark Man Blues, an interview with love, and get a prelude to passion for free. Another thing, I do have a pub, I have my own publishing company. I have a great team of editors and they worked on all my projects. The ones that if you, if you do have a book, you definitely want to get it edited. Well, I'm sorry Amanda's having so much trouble because, like I said, I heard her before and the girl brings it. So hopefully we'll work things out. If not, we'll have her again some other time. But we go on. You guys will lighten it up. Thank you so much. All right, I'll, I'll jump back in. All right. This one is... Uh... <clears throat> All right. This one is um, after uh, after after the notorious B.I.G. Sky is the limit. Big energy unlimited, undimmed by fallacy of failure, containing enough megawatts to power every nation on Earth for free. The clap of Zeus's supercharged bolt should be a beacon, not an albatross. Careful not to befriend those who want to steal your thunder. Sensation of earned gratification, economic and societal. Change in pockets. Promote advantageous augmentation. Mutate the substrate. Solicit clinking metallic coins. Strife plays into catapulting towards success. Creamy flavored cigar smoke plumes propagate fortune resounds hard work pays no delays living in the clouds this is the definition of high life unbelievable big bucks influencing government how do we become our own savior strategize reconnaissance committed with tom clancy precision change the station stave off inflation forge our relations not enough sass to fake one's origin story a nightmare upbringing medusa petrifies mass law of conservation doubling up shifting powers controlled by a few are we living in an oligarchy Bell tolls. A chimera hydra rears its ugliest heads. A hallucinatory perception. Ostentatious religion. Unmended hearts sustained by rebellion's drawbacks. Lashes. Being stripped of one's power. You must own your own worth. Your values. Your identifiable destiny. Your achievement of it was all a dream. Entrenched in darkness as detailed as Aztec pottery. Hypnotize. Observation. Lifeless body. Lies on a slab. Ripe for examination. And right before its organs can be harvested. It turns Lazarus. Leaps up. I'm not ready to die. I don't know if there's life after death. Reanimated. Reinvigorated. Stimulate the mind and the body. Electric will follow. Flavor in your ear. I got a story to tell. Hell bent oration uplifts. One more chance. Civilization at a tipping point things done changed tactical marksman takes aim gun up in your waist please don't shoot up the place because i be seeing some ladies tonight that should be having reproductive rights instead of suicidal thoughts dichotomy more money more problem psychology what's beef juicy table scraps satiated feast cannibalism hunger for a new commandment Thou shall lay a crackless foundation, foundation for the future, crackless, brick by brick by brick with each brick. Yes. Ooh, that was a good one. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, PTS of D. Sometimes I see glimpses inside his smile, his laugh, his eyes. Yes, in his eyes. That's where he lies. That's where the old him lives. The him before, the him back then. Because back then, in those growing up years, those formative years, he was there. He was present. He was him. That man that used to be him, that father so free man, the man that threw catch and came to all my games and taught me stuff in the garage and took care and was my dad, was my best dad. I didn't even know what I had until it was gone. 
until he was gone. Those days that his eyes changed. The person who was him was no more, was never more. It was so many years before I figured it all out and realized what had really taken him. What had really taken him and snatched my dad away from me was the PTS of D. That snatched him right away from me, the memories surfaced from the view of the nom and the childhood trauma. It all spilled into his brain and things started to change. His eyes started to glaze and his pupils were so cloudy as storms rolled in and rolled out and rolled away with him with a whisk and a fury. The PTS of D wrapped his mind in a worry in a person that wasn't him, wasn't he, the dad of me, never again to be, never again to be. He fights and he fights, but the battle just wins as his mind turns the screws of the war in the jungle. Those scenes kept alive by the replaying of loops and the dad that I grew up with just changed into something new a new version, a new person that didn't have space for me anymore. His mind was too cloudy and his eyes couldn't see, couldn't see me, couldn't really see me, couldn't even hear me. I needed him to hear me, but he was lost, lost inside his head. The voices talked and confused him and the people just used him and took and took and took. And I couldn't even look at the eyes that I had loved because they were not his. Ooh. They were not his, not there. They were not there. And he was so unaware of the love that he gave and the child that he raised and the good that he did, the great dadding that he did. But sometimes now in his older years, his grandpa years, his old voice I hear and his laugh and those eyes light up as he sees, as he sees my sister's little girl. Those eyes sometimes show me the way back to him. But the trauma is always there and will always win. The PTS of D it stole from me the eyes of he and the dad of she. Who is me? Who is me? Where is he? Where is he? Inside those eyes. Those eyes haunt me. His eyes still haunt me. Wow. That was beautiful. Well, it was too. I, yeah. I love that PTS yeah. of D. That was that's amazing. I like that. Mm. That was yeah. beautiful, Chrissy. That was just I felt it in my heart. Beautiful. Yeah, really great delivery too. Yeah. Oh, Amanda, it looks like you're with us. Amanda's in the building. I think yes. so. Awesome. I think so. Are you there, girl? Anytime, if you can hear me, if you can jump in, just do. A classic moment from the Passions Private Collection. I long for her like the desert rain to quench the thirst from the fire that burns within me. I held her as though she were a breath of fresh air. Surely it would calm me. The scent of her brought serenity to my soul and with her, I have found paradise. You see, her love is like that of the ocean, so vast and yet so true. My passion for her feeds my emotions. You see, I am this side of passion. An aura of vibrations in the raw. When the answer becomes the question to love me, please, let this be the moment the romancing of you takes me to where love is that beautiful something you can't let go of. When you call for this moment, I will be the yes for every night with you. And truly, you have never been loved like this. These moments of a passionate kiss will be as though the desert were yearning for the sea. From these contemplations, ascertain this nirvana, finding that passageway to forever my hunger whispering for the air you breathe. When aroused, become that flower blooming, surrendering the trembling of your body and that I may capture the epitome of you. Imagining your love like this. Now, if I were making love, you would be the only recipe I need. I am to be everything that becomes you. Where my passion is to take your emotions even your dreams will come. Imagine 
a caress so sensuous it tempts you to anticipation have my desire as the touch of my lips discovers the essence of your pleasures capture this moment have the meat us into you be the recipe flowing from these very words becoming everything you've ever dreamed have my eroticism for this sexy in you yes you for all that your love could be hear the whispers of my wanting every moment i'm into you say you love me and from the urge become all these things from the whispers of my thoughts have this reflection loving me like you want to have these tender moments take you from another lonely night to tasting ecstasy i want to for every moment of your desires you become that storm trembling from the moment you come become these passionate thoughts i won't stop until i'm feeling this event your love soft and wet as i lay it down for the moment you want your love to begin be taken to the edge of everything having this be the making of your dreams and never have another lonely night classic from my recipe for love nice nice and you know nice. i'm going to jump in because christy i'm not big on love poems and and heartfelt poems are pretty much do fuck you political poems but <laughs> your piece has inspired me to read this one which i've never read i sent it to my son the heart beat beat of your heart's time honeysuckle scent of my sweet baby's breath feeling tiny fingers that fist around mine. The heaviness of your relax falls asleep on my chest. Three, six, nine, the goose drank wine. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Mama's gonna sing you a lullaby. Be a baby, e b b i biggie by knick knack patty whack. Give the dog a bone. You are my home. You are mine to teach and to love and to shine your light and preach you truths and read you books and dry your tears and fear you, feed your head and dispel your fears. And I'll keep watch as you grow past time to the older son of my little boy sublime, singing songs of warriors and children's dreams, exploring the world in a yellow submarine, Go out and live your life with no fear, but remember when other voices have your ear. Keep your heart true and your mind sharp as a tack. Pay attention, stay focused, and always watch your back. For you have been schooled and you know where it's at. You are mine to teach and to love and preach you truths and read you books and dry your tears and feed your head and dispel your fears. And I'll keep watch as you grow past time to the older soul of my little boy sublime. Thank you, Christy, that brought that up. Nice. Yeah, so good, love that. Ooh, you guys are bringing up the whole other thing. Beautiful. I'll go back in. All right. Get it. Tethered to fate. Predestination. Giving way to staunch deposition. Lawyers in courthouses duke it out. Dust not settling. Instead flames crackle. Marching band reverie plays. We're in the army now. Adhering to staccato song, for the beat dictates whether we stop, drop, or roll. Remembering those fire drills as youth, in truth, were we made to be ruled? For the unschooled and unskilled get the baddest rap. Scapegoating on tap, it's a clap trap. Too unlearned to locate what's on the map. Locate the hidden meaning in philosophy, and nuggets of wisdom reveal. Lamentation leads to prophecy. Meditation channels root chakras. Being being able to achieve Van Dam splits, pushing the body past its limits, cosmically clandestine, a cut above the troves of waste we inherit, spirit in solidarity, underpinnings of hard-earned truth. It is my hope 
that new generations baptized themselves in, fount in fountains of knowledge, dunking in plentifully pure springs, while former ones taste the trickling of their gains, made for the greater goal of human preservation, advancing our collective station, no humiliation, alleviating degradation as apostolic quests are confidently fulfilled. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. The portal calls to me so softly she speaks to the insides of me. She sweetly sings in her swaying sounds of calling me back to myself. The body aches to be remembered. The body aches to be accepted, to be pleasured inside the safety of security. You are safe, she speaks, they speak, the eyes speak. You are safe to come and play and pleasure and accept, accept you for who you are, accept you for yourself. Safe to travel now through the opening, through the eyes, through the portal through the pussy portal that you hold inside you. Let it remind you and guide you to the who that you can be, the who that sets you free to love all the parts, the shadows of you, the ungluing of you, the unwinding of you, the pushing on through of you. Go ahead, dear, without the fear, without the doubt or baggage of guilt and start pushing, pushing through the portal of you, pushing through to the other side you, the you that you already are you. Push, my dear, push, push, portal through you, portal through you. The portal is you. Was he portal? <laughs> nice. Wow. Okay, this this next piece is in a future Dark Man Blues book, which is titled Slave Day. And the name of this poem is called D N A. Uh -huh. Strands, threads, filaments. A recipe called humanity, you or me, and yet you claim not to be a part of this world gone mad, looped into a cycle thinking I'm better than you. Strange is the fruit that comes from the same tree. What makes you makes me, evolution or God. Whatever you believe, mankind will end his kind without ever knowing his greatness, wanting to exclude the very part of him that makes him self-replicating. I am you. Wow. Yeah. Nice. I am you. And then the skies parted. Stumbling start. Racehorse buckles. Stupendous reversal of fortune, a seismic 180 degree turn, overclass clouds threaten valiant days, your smile parted stormy vestiges, viscous turbulent seas turn to placid ties, caught in mid tumble. Your unexpected caress kept me from carelessly careening. I don't believe in stealing kisses, but I plant them just the same, refraining from being too timid, tame. Flame in my stomach arraigns your beauty. Objects of affection adapt to changing circumstances. Subtlety in conviction. Assertiveness, where it counts most, at an all-encompassing connection grows luminous. Pump up the kilojoules and have the electricity course the rejoined bodies, stabilized like rent. Marinated rotisserie chicken broils, blemishes undone with engulfing embraces. Eyelashes flicker in hazy neon glows of EDM-laced club vibes. Collars popped, buttons undone. You undress me literally and figuratively, hot and bothered, hemming on clothes, unspools. Your hands trace the nape of my neck. Your lips press down hard on sizzling scorched skin. We unite in collective consciousness. 
a heaving hive mind of holistic loving hope rests not on the laurels of passing days but the promise of far-reaching sojourns capitalizing on interwoven connection and then suddenly the skies part and the gods the all-seeing oculus observes omnipotently for your sake and for my own prayers are answered Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Can I uh can I ask you guys, starting with Christy, could I ask you, do you have um like a set routine when you write? Or do you have thoughts that you keep in a notebook and then put them together? Do you have a certain time of day or place that you write? Can you tell me a little bit about your process? Yeah. Um I I refer to myself as the channeling poet. So that's how poetry came to me. I heard one day while doing laundry, start writing and I started writing and poetry came out. So it's almost like I get this feeling like there's a poem in there. And if I don't write it down or, you know, do something with it, I just feel uncomfortable. So something, you know, a phrase will hit. And then I can just feel the poems, like something's there. And I usually go on my phone because that's usually what I have. And I just do it in a notes app and then I'll, you know, play with it later. But yeah, I don't, I, I do journaling in the morning and sometimes poetry comes out then, but mm. that's about it. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Douglas, can you share your process with us? Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it depends. Um... Sometimes if I'm writing something that's uh, that's more technical or has a lot of um, different structural elements or a lot of thematic elements, I'm going to like outline it first. Um, I do do an outline, like kind of get the skeleton down and then I just kind of fill it in um, almost like I'm writing a novel or, or, a, or a script or something. Um, that's kind of my process with that. Um, if I'm writing more introspectively um, and more emotionally where it comes from the gut, um, I don't really have to do that kind of like that kind of like particular tailoring. I could it just kind of comes out raw and then I'll go back and if I'm going to perform it. If I'm going to like slam it, if I'm going to open mic it, um, I usually will go back and edit uh, I'll edit. I never really perform a first draft. This is like my rule. I never perform a first draft. I always at least do like two drafts on a poem before I perform it. Um, and I'll get feedback from people. Like if, if there's an audience response or something or like a nugget, like, or like there's, there's someone comes up to me or during the performance, someone says something or there's a reaction. I'll like kind of bleed that into the edit and then perform it again. And see where it, and see kind of the evolution of it and where it goes, you know. So, so you're not against to once you have a piece and it's written and you consider it done, um, if you perform it and you feel something different, you're not um, against maybe rewriting or adding to it. That cool. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's dope because I I find when I do it that um, I write it down, maybe I'll edit a little in the first draft. Then I say it out loud. Then I say it with my bass player to get a cadence for it. Mm. And mm. a lot of times it's editing along the way. But also I have poems from the early 60s that I'm still working on and still adding to. So it's a never ending process for me, too. Yeah. Totally. And Samuel, um, I've heard you do all kinds of poems from love poems to very political poems. Really, you span the spectrum of ideas and emotions can you tell us about your process a little bit okay so in the beginning uh when i started writing again this is after college after marriage after having children i started writing again and then i only wanted to write love poems and so uh and then it, it wasn't coming out good until i freed my emotions once i freed my emotions then i was able to I'm going to tell this story because I'm going to write everything that I believe, everything I've done, everything I dream. And that makes my poems come out a little bit better because I'm sharing the real me. I'm not mm -hmm. making up anything. So even when I write, uh, when I started writing the Dark Man Blues series, the first book was called Imagining Freedom. 
and and I was inspired by William Washington to write conscious pieces because we talk a lot, but I wasn't writing it. I'm like, nobody's gonna buy it. And he said, yeah, but you should tell the people the truth. I said, okay, I will speak my truth and, and just put it in a book. And so I've written over 40 books. Wow. I've published 20 of them. I'm on book 41 right now. And so uh, I have books that are coming out. I could put out a book, for the, uh, two books for the next five years or next 10 years and not have to write another book. But I'm, my wow. goal is to write 50 books. Not that I will stop at 50, but my process is that when I write a poem, I'm editing it at the same time. And mm -hmm. for example, like, uh, William Washington gave me a dope line and was at 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time in the AM. I, I jumped out of bed, wrote the poem in five minutes, no editing. That's how dope it was because the line was so dope. So they made that whole process. So, and then, so like I said, I've, I've written so much that uh, now it's like, it just, it just pours out of me, you know, and I've heard some great poetry today. Yes. And uh, yes. and I went to both these poets page trying to see what they did. I've been been on your page and your page like last week. As soon as I saw your name, I clicked on. I'm like, OK, let me see what they do. And you guys are you guys were hiding because you guys are both dope. I couldn't find this on your page. But what I what I heard today. Amazing. You guys yeah. are both amazing writers and performers. Yeah. So I salute both of you. Yeah. Yeah, well, like I said, that's where I heard Doug. He came up on a feed on my IG because I didn't know him and we weren't friends at the time. And it was like, oh, shit, I need to hear more. And then, well, Christy, oh, my God. From the minute I met her, I was, like, in love with her poetry. And then when we perform live and, and her vibe is just so there and her emotion is so raw and so available, that was like, oh yeah, I know she'll be dope too. And well, Samuel, like I said, I've heard you, you're smooth as butter anytime. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, so, you know, if you guys got more to spit, we got more time, I'd love to hear it. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna share some more of um, Dark Man Blues and Interview with Love. Now, yeah. I went in my archives and I will tell you that I found four poems that were really short and I put them together and I called it character. So this is because I have poems in my archives that are not in books. They just sitting there, poems that are in files I could go grab at any time I want to bring up. This is something that I learned from, I worked for an entertainer for five years. And, and he said, but one day he said, uh, go down to the, the, the basement and get these songs for me. And I'm like, this stuff is old. He said, well, when I finish it, it's going to be new. And so this is character. I said, she was a motion picture I wanted to star in. Not just acting, I wanted that dark man blues thing, loving the queen. I wanted to hero myself in taking chances. So I told her, take this like you own me. No doubt I'm about this life, two souls becoming one if it's you setting the scale for me, asking, when my love's in need. Speaking RIP to the love I used to be addicted to. Yes, I found myself addicted. I had to drop digits. My wanting to hear sexy, damn, I wanted to taste it. Like a drug, it had me. It was like confirmation and in another moment, I had to have it, making those pillows scream once again. To have her taking me deep like my dreams, it's got me addicted it's been a while since i've tasted beautiful arousing herb tones she be black coffee in my mornings her essence flows through me i tell her she's that preview to my pain we love hard have you ever felt black rain i could never let her go she tells me the same when she says i'm your fiend dark man <laughs> she's off the chain called me the mackin game i'm just hungry for her love, I show her. Thank you. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Love that. Deep in the archives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's some dope stuff up in them archives. I'll tell you that. Yeah, like, there is. Oh, let me go find some. And then that was actually four poems that I put together to make one. 
and they flow together, you know, because you can yes. write a poem. I, I wrote a poem in 2007. I put it with a poem in 2009. And, then, mm -hmm. and I, when I performed, I said, I'm going to do two poems. And they said, I thought you were going to do two poems. I said, I did. You weren't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. I was doing the last couple of days going, you know, the old shit, looking at it. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of stuff I clicked on. I'm like, I don't even remember that one, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You go back through the archives and it's like, oh, shit, I wrote that. I wasn't even thinking about that. And that's dope. Let me add to it. Let me fix it. Let me work on it. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I, and then you read the ones you're like, oh, I need to work on that one, man. That was a long time ago. Yeah, some of them is like, oh, I think that's shit. I'm not sure, but I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so um, I can do another. Up. Oh, all right, do it. Okay, so this piece I wrote in 2015, it got me into a movie. And I'm going to put it with a poem I wrote in 2017. I told you that poet gave me that dope line. And I put these two poems together because they just made matches. So I said, she was a love poem and didn't know it. So I began to write her down my understanding she needed to feel this way. Her private time would be me tasting her emotions, those hidden thoughts knowing she needed my affection. I could never say no to doing it. Again, so I slept with poetry last night. Caressed her surrender like a dream came true. Had my emotions taken by pleasure to hear her affectionately whispering, Samuel Rain, are you a freak? Oh, she would take me deep. I had intentions of never letting go. Her wordplay was my submission, no options given. I only needed my pen to go all in. One word, next line, script in this dope rhyme, you see. I slept with poetry last night because she made love to my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Oh. oh, and props to Wawa Washington for that. For, for that uh, absolutely, because he 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 gave me the line. I slept with poetry last night, and and I like I wrote that poem in five minutes, no editing. Yeah. It, yeah. it just it just felt good the minute I typed it out on my computer, because I type, I don't write. So I typed it out yeah. right out. Just got out of bed and typed it real quick and boom, I'm like, oh, this is so dope. Yeah. Learned it in one day and spit it at the open mic the next day. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I love talking to William. He He's always so inspiring. Yeah. So, so he's pushed my pen to levels that uh, I didn't know I could reach. I knew I wanted to get there. And every year for the past 15 years that I've been writing, every year I push myself to go to another level because I can't stay in the same place. It yes. means grass is growing around me and, and I don't need grass growing around me. So I'm always reaching for that next dope line, that next dope poem, and then anything that I could even ad lib because I, I do ad libs in my poetry as well. I even do a haiku in the middle of a poem if, if you let me. Well, I'm gonna do it anyway. And <laughs> just do a haiku. Some people catch it, some people don't. Yeah. 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 There's something to be said about being able to freestyle in your poem. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, it's been really amazing. You guys have blown me away with your poetry. I knew you would. Um, so let me open it up to the people that are here. Shoki's here, Dan is here. Um, Amanda couldn't make it, unfortunately. Norm and Cecile, it's nice to see you, Cecile. And Jill, if you guys want to unmute and join the conversation, please, you're welcome to ask the poets any questions, make a comment. Uh-oh, we have a silent audience. Uh, hey, Norm. Not for hey, long. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just start with, wow, you know, just... What a, what a set of sets. Yeah. And particularly, I like the way they were arranged where, you know, going to, taking turns and going around in a circle like that. That was, that was, that was really great. Uh, too many compliments. I mean, I could just go on and say, okay, Dan, stop, stop. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Uh, 
beautiful work, intense, incredible stuff. And uh, I was glad to uh, have had a chance to be here and listen, even though I was having dinner and doing things with the people in the house. I had to put the camera on because, you know, you don't want to hear all that. Even I didn't want to hear all that. So anyway, um, I appreciate Jane. I appreciate this. And I'm um, going to do a very quick little note here. Um, I've made a, a listing of poetry venues that are that purports to be global. And I try to find open mic listings wherever they might be. And I'm going mm -hmm. to post some information in the chat, which is regarding that. And also, I, I run an open mic, Sacred Grounds. It's in San Francisco, 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. And I know that's the time differentiation between East and West Coast makes that. It, but I'll put the information anyway, because um, cool. I'm, I'm looking for open mics to add them so more poets can find more venues once you see it. And then uh, come to Sacred Grounds and, and have a great time. I know Norm, Norm featured at Sacred Grounds a while back. And um, I know Stacy, and there was somebody else in here that I knew, but I, I don't think they're here right now. Uh, it's too bad. But anyway, I'm going to stop. Great, great appreciative notes. I'll put something in there and I shall now go to point. Two. Cool. And if you hook up with me on IG, I'm Jane Spoken Word. I can send you a list of open mics that uh, I know of also. There's, a, there's so many out of them out there. And oh, yeah. um, I, I used to, during the pandemic, when the pandemic first started, um, I was doing some open mics, but then I, I really, and I said this last time, um, I find that doing these three to five minute stints are really fucking with my performing. So <laughs> I haven't been doing open mics because um, I find this venue, like, like with Samuel and Christy and with Doug, um, you, you get to open up, you really get to express yourself, you get to perform your piece, you get to perform what's inside of you when you're not on that time frame. So um, I do go to listen to open mics to support the poets, but I haven't been doing them at all. But thank you, thank you so much for coming, Dan. Thank you, and I appreciate the information. And I put my email in there, but incorrectly, so I'm gonna fix that. All right, cool. Love it, love it, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm thinking that uh, what you just now finished saying, Jane, about the, um, you know, you got a three minute snippet. Yeah. And what do you got to do? You got to throw in, you know, do you throw in one piece that's still going to only be like the tip of the iceberg or you get two pieces in that show your range. And then at the same time, you say, you know, but that that's not even a shadow. Right. So, so you know, the opportunity to go around, you know, you're, I mean, even in this venue, quote unquote, you can feel the response and where you're going to go next or your next round. Yeah. And, um, you know, that to me is inspiring. And especially when you got poets who read this evening that go into their archives and it sounds, yeah. it's, it's, it's new to me. You know, it's always going to be new shit to me. Yeah. I don't see no dust, ain't no rust, nothing like that, you know? <laughs> so, um, I, 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 Take the fuck out of your love poems, dear Mr. Rain. And, yeah. um, <laughs> Woo, hot. Thank you. Yes. And, um, you know, as a matter of fact, regardless of the, uh, the temperature or the uh, theme of the poems, I hear love in all of them. And that to me is... Is, a, is an important relationship, you know, with the voice that's inside. That, yeah, it's coming from here. It's coming from here. And that's like at my source. So, um, uh, you know, listening to Doug and uh, Christy, uh, you know, there was definitely passion and fire coming out of there. And... And I also like the simmer. So 
that's my little piece right there. Thank you, Norman. Thanks for coming. Um, I meet people that I don't know or haven't heard um, or have heard of that haven't heard. Um, Douglas, I'm going to have to go spray some ice water on my brain. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you have the nerve to make me think. So, you know, we'll just discuss that later after I, you know, get your information. Um, Chrissy, honey, I don't know what to say. I mean, that it shook me up, down, left, right, and sideways. That was absolutely gorgeous. Mr. Rain. Um, I'm a California girl, and you made me want to go full-blown Southern Belle. Just whip out a fan <laughs> and start fluttering my eyelashes and saying, oh, Lord, sir, because I just, I just did not handle it. <laughs> that was that was incredible. Thank you so much, all of Thank you. I found it to be extremely inspiring. The three of you. Uh, I'm a musician. I write songs. So if I write songs, I write lyrics, but I also write texts. English not being my first language. I had to really pay attention to Douglas because the the delivery, whoa, the, the three of you are very inspiring. Also going back to the archives, there are songs that I wrote in the 70s. And I look at them and say, uh, do I go back to this? Do I finish it? Do I do something better with this? And actually, I, I just did one. I used to live in New York. I just redone one that I did in New York in the 70s. And I, it works. It, I, it's better now. But um, sometimes I have a problem writing love poems. Mr. Rain, your love poems yeah. are so sensuous. Thank you. <laughs> and because my experience haven't been so positive, I have a tendency to write <laughs> blues and I've been traveling in the United States playing the blues on the chitlin circuit so my shit is always the blues and I feel like I gotta get out of that vein and write something a little bit happier so that people don't come out of my gig looking like damn Cecile your shit is sad so whatever that's, that's, that's what it is I cannot invent happiness but I'm trying okay. to invent to look forward to joy in some kind of way and not sound flat. Mm -hmm. And none of your shit sounds flat. It's, it's totally. And, and Miss, Miss Jane, if you yes. can find me a, you know, we, we both live in the South, right? So you can be Miss Jane. Yes. <laughs> uh, Miss Cecile. Um, um, if you find an open mic in, in Chicago, I have not found an open mic in Chicago yet. Oh, well, I'll send you some information. I have some. Por favor. Thank I you. I will. And, yes, and thank you for coming, Cecile. Well, there's also, you. I was say in Chicago, if you get in touch with Billy Tuggle, he does a lot of um, open mics out there. I yeah, I'll send you his information. Me. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, thank Shoki. You. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Send me. Yeah. Well, Paul, I see you back there. Thank you so much for coming, poet. Uh, thanks again, Jane, for, for setting this up. And thanks, uh, Samuel and Douglas and Christy. It was just, uh, uh, really, uh, I kind of w really enjoyed your uh, mutual understanding of each other's vibe and how you kind of constructed this um, sort of unitary set, I'll call it, and kind of drawing the line norm created a bit further about, uh, you know, um, uh, kind of creating this third thing you know, I'm, I'm talking kind of relationally here, you know, when two people communicate, you have the one person and the second person, but they create a third thing in between the two. And, you know, you're three different people, but you created this 
uh, kind of very unified set through your uh, sensitivity towards each other's work. I think that's, Jane, um, that's one thing I'm really getting from this format you put together was the um, um, further than the fact that nobody's limited to a three or five minute thing. And I, I have my criticisms of that too as well. I think we all understand the purpose of a three or a two or four or five minute set and that it's an endeavor to get uh, as many people in and create this kind of uh, larger community. Um, but uh, so much of the time, to my mind, you know, a, a short time limit just has, uh, and, you know, apologies to everybody here who's testosterone oriented. So much of the time, a short time limit has so much to do with testosterone. It's like, you know, how quick can you do it? you know, kind of thing. And, um, and I, you know, again, it, it has its purpose. We all understand that. But uh, you can't, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, really exercise the depth and scope and breadth of uh, your voice and your uh, poetic spirit simply in that limited format. Um, so this format is just a really, really, really sumptuous kind of feast and a chance to um, kind of understand people on a deeper level. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, collectively, the three of you, I was just really um, taken by, um, you know, the focus that was going back and forth, getting passed back and forth between love and resistance work. And I think that it's kind of a comment uh, on the times we're living in where, um, you know, it's really up to us to uh, make these bonds and express our, uh, our true uh, humanity, our true humanness that's about um, uh, being close with our own emotions and close with other people through our emotions and our expressions of affection and, and appreciate, appreciation and carnal uh, fulfillment and that kind of deeper sense of um, spiritual affection between people. And, and then this other kind of uh, vein that was so prominent here, the kind of resistance going on. And one thing I've always... Um, myself kind of liked so much about uh, live spoken poetry from the very earliest times I was involved with it where I am, which is around the block from Jane in New York City, was yeah. is a sense of urgency to work. And there's nothing I like better than a sense of urgency. And, you know, it was very, very prominent in the work here tonight of uh, uh, Christy, certainly, and Doug, and Samuel, too. Samuel has, you know, a smoother delivery, but, he, 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 you know, that incredible urgency is really there. He, he's like myself, you know, uh, an older gentleman. You, you can get a little more mellowed out with your urgency sometimes. Uh, and it <laughs> has a true. different appeal, but it's has no, no less urgency to That's it. Right. So, you know, and and the thing to me too, I think everybody these days who's on these um, uh, online uh, virtual things is, uh, you know, we've all had to come to task with um, how do you work this format? How do you uh, work a square, flat picture screen? How do you deal with that with your live spoken voice. It's yes, one yes. thing for me, um, my interest, when I first came to New York City, one of my main purposes was to go directly looking for its live poetry. And I found it fairly quickly, fortunately. Yes, yes. Uh, and, um, and then to enhance my exposure, I started uh, running readings, live readings. And one of the things um, that I connected with right away was to hear how all these different people 
uh, manipulated the physical space with mm. the voice, you know, mm. what you could do to a room with your voice. Mm -hmm. And because of some of the spaces I was running readings in, they were small spaces and it didn't need amplification. So you learned what a person could do to a space with their unamplified, unfiltered, you know, organic voice, how you could um, you could blow that space up. You could make it really smooth and still. You could make it really close and warm. You could make it a space where uh, you could very easily get people to understand um, your feelings of alienation and mm. outrage. Mm. Uh, and so working on a flat screen, you have to adapt a little bit differently. Yeah. And I don't I think we're all still figuring that out. It's an ongoing process. Um, but getting back to, you know, the three of you and how your voices worked here, um, you know, it's that sense of urgency that really um, engages me. Um, it makes me sit up and take notice. And I really start to connect with those urgencies. Uh, and uh, I also don't want to go on too much longer here, but I also found, of course, what everybody's done here to be very instructive in many ways. And that's always been one of my main interests in uh, coming to uh, uh, hear and experience spoken poetry was that's really uh, where I learn. You know, I, I uh, get informed by other people's approaches. I'm not uh, I don't I didn't study poetry academically. I, I think I my whole life I took one course called advanced creative writing in my last year in high school. And after that it was just going to readings and trying to put together readings where um, you know, sometimes there would be over 120 people reading over eight hours and what people used to call these marathons. You don't yep. see anymore um and you know that was just uh, more than a master class in um learning um you could call them and you know sure there were outlet outright tricks but tons of technique all the different approaches to how uh, the sort of the infinity of ways people could use their voices um and that gets back to this thing about a time limit too um my basic orientation to just creativity on any level is there is just an infinity of possibilities. And for myself, methodologically, I can't limit myself to one method of creating. I'm just kind of anarchic and all over the place. <laughs> Although I may have a short list of five or six methods by which I end up with a poetry or by which I find the poem or the poem finds me. I'm never really limited to one way of writing. There's just so many uh, different ways to do it, and I'm always learning new ones. So uh, again, um, sorry for babbling on for so long, but uh, thanks again, uh, and Sam and Christy and, uh, and Jane um, for this really great format. This is a very, very fulfilling listening experience. Thank you so much. I agree. Thank you for coming, Paul. I'm going to catch you around the way in the neighborhood. Julie, uh, very nice to meet you. I don't know if we know each other through IG or anything, but thank you for coming. You're welcome. Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> I just saw I just saw you in my email. Good evening, everybody. Let me. Good evening. Let me try to figure my. Okay, here I am. Hi, 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 hi everybody. <laughs> yeah, I got the email, and I was like, I don't know who this is, but I'm gonna check it out. <laughs> and I got in late because I was working. I said, oh, no, I got to get, I got to listen or know what the hell's going on. So here I am. And the next time you get together, I'll read something. Oh, cool. Cool. So um, are we IG friends? Are you on Instagram? I am on Instagram. 
All right, cool. I'm Jane Spoken Word on Instagram. Come and friend me so I can find you. Okay, let me write that down. Jane Spoken, spoken Word. Word. Okay, I'll find you. On Instagram, cool. I, I'm Miss Julie. Okay, Miss Julie, I will find you and we will work <laughs> something out. Thank you for coming and it was very lovely to meet you. Okay, same here, everybody. Same Sophie, here. thank you for coming too. Jill, thank you. You guys, just fill my heart, fill my soul. You make my mind sore. I just so enjoy listening to all of you people like make the movement happy, make the earth move, make the, the, the vibration just come out. It's, it's beautiful. I can't thank you enough. I'm so grateful that you agreed to come and do this with us. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Thanks for the invite, Jane. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jane. Really thank you. Thank you once again. Absolutely stellar. Galactic, you know. Cool. And nice to meet you people that I don't know. It's, this is awesome. All right. Good night, thank all. You. Peace and have Yay. a wonderful evening. Deep into ink black skies I ride. Past paisley moons and purple skies to gaze into the future of a thousand years to whisper sweet lullabies into the air. If lullaby were a poem that would be me.